this is Hound Dog 7, over. Uh, this is Sugar 50, go ahead, over. This is Hound Dog 7, fire mission. Enemy troops estimate company size and two tanks moving west on road 48. Coordinates 179er. Hi, I'm your host, Megalon Jones, and this is a Combat Mission Final Blitzkrieg After Action Report. Welcome to the sharp end of the stick. The date is late autumn 1944, and for the last six weeks, the U.S. First Army has been shoving regimental combat teams into the Hurtgen Forest. Currently joining 2nd Platoon, C for Charlie Company, 22nd Regimental Combat Team of the 4th Infantry Division as it attempts to seize a German strongpoint at Rosshau. There are four objectives on the map, Rosshau itself, the machine shop and two of touch objectives in the form of bridges. The Hurrican Forest campaign represents a monumental failure for the United States Army. It couldn't play to its strengths. The visibility was bad due to the dense woods and it couldn't call in airstrikes or artillery and generally stand off and use firepower and mobility. In fact, British observers reckoned that it was Passendale with tree bursts. Grasshow itself is a small agricultural community Sitting at the center of the map, it has great fields of fire in all directions. Looking at our objectives, I've identified three areas of interest. The first is Grasshau. You can notice that there are many multi-story buildings, lots of windows, low walls, and all of this adds up to great infantry fighting positions. The second of our area of interest is a wooded patch protected by rivers that cannot be forded. This offers the German army enfilade positions into any advance into Grasshau itself. If I was the Germans, I would put machine guns and rifle teams there. As bad as that is, it's the third area of interest that gives me the real heartburn. It's a low ridge created by farming that offers excellent field of fire. And if the Germans don't have guns, machine guns, etc. there, you can call me Kaiser Wilhelm. 1.45 in the afternoon, go time. The plan is to shove 2nd platoon into firing positions to do reconnaissance by fire backed up by tank destroyers. Second platoon moves into position.
Our dog faces start to take light fire at first, which gradually increases in intensity and accuracy coming from grass howl. A German 75 millimeter field gun. And at the top of the map, we can see an infantry platoon maneuvering. The plan is made to shove armor out in front of these threats to neutralize them. Grasshow itself, it seems to be a mixed force of Waffen SS and regular German army. Report. We're eight minutes into battle and we have the Germans on the upper left hand screen maneuvering to attempt to take a position at the farmhouse. We have guns on the field in the upper left and German Waffen SS and regular army in Grasshau proper. The Shermans move forward, taking advantage of their frontal armor, which is proof against low-velocity shells offered by the German 75mm field guns. Another gun is spotted. One Sherman acts as an HE sponge, a second moves up behind a wall and takes fire. It isn't long before both guns are either knocked out or suppressed. But just then, German, the left hand part of the screen, takes a penetrating shot. Everyone survives in the tank, but the gun is knocked out. To make matters worse, German artillery starts falling. It doesn't seem like we're going to be able to hang out there very long. So, we have to start making some decisions, meaning we're going to have to go forward into the town of Grasshau before I'm totally comfortable. And in another couple minutes, a platoon of tank destroyers are gonna show up to offer reinforcements along with another platoon. That can only mean one thing. We're expecting German armor. Hang tight and I'll be with you back very soon for the next part in Fortress Grasshau. Thank you for watching and good day.